Good morning, everyone. Um, to me, Lang, uh, Molweni, um, a warm welcome to all of you. I hope you enjoy today's session, which should be about <clears throat> an hour and a half long. So today <clears throat> we'll carry on with another topic. So in the past few weeks, we've discussed a lot of different topics of how to choose a supervisor, a discipline, how to manage your project, how to search the literature, etc. So one of the things that is also very important for your career is writing a CV. Now, sometimes writing a CV may not be as straightforward as it seems. There's a lot of tips and trades of the technique that one should follow. And there's also differences between different types of CV. For example, when you write a CV, for example, for an academic position or for funding versus a CV, if you're going to work in industry, that the content of that CV and the formatting differs a bit, but we'll cover all of that today. <clears throat> so let's look at in general your career planning. This is something that we also touched on in the last lecture, but this is important for you to already now start planning your career, start thinking of possible projects, start thinking if I'm doing my honors, do I want to do a master's, in which field, is this field fundable, etc. And will this type of research or discipline make available job opportunities for me. So it's already a good start to start looking at job opportunities. What is out there and what are people looking for? What skills should you have? Um, what type of degree should you have? And in general, what is the industry looking for in academia and also in more the industrial sector or the more uh, <coughs> other sectors. So look for jobs, look in the advert already now, look what they are looking for in the applicants, and then also read CVs of more senior staff member. For example, ask your supervisor or your mentor for their CV so that you can have a look how they structure it and how they write it. Also very important to now already start understanding how to write an effective cover letter that will be formed part of your CV and then also how to network. This is very important in exposing yourself. If you know people, then it's sometimes a bit easier to get a job, especially in the pharmaceutical industry. If you know someone in the industry, you can ask them for advice of how to get a job, what should be included in the CV, how should I write my cover letter, etc. So there's a little tips and tricks of the trade. So network, um, link up with people, for example, on LinkedIn, and look for those available jobs. Then sometimes universities also have career centers. It's a good idea to go to this and have a mock interview or before you even go for an interview, have an interview in front of your friends or in front of your supervisor and anticipate uh, possible questions so that you can be ready for the answers, right? Then um, you can already start looking um, which organizations are a good fit for your career. What skills do you have? If you don't have these, then attend workshops or courses to be to get that competitive advantage. Um, again, the importance of networking, connecting with people in a particular organization that you are interested in is important. Seeing what's out there, um, what type of jobs will fit the skills that I have, or if I don't have the skills, then what type of workshops and courses should I attend so that I can develop my skill set and then be more applicable to apply to these jobs, right? Um, ask yourself, what is your interest? Where do you see yourself in five years times? What type of soft skills do I have? Um, you must think about like, for example, um, if you have wanting to apply for an industry type of jobs, leadership skills, team networking, these kind of skills are important depending on the type of job that one applies for. OK, what is your values? This is very important. What is the values 
of the type of institute or business that you are applying for? Does that match your own values? What is your work style? This is very important. Sometimes also when you apply to work in a lab, it's a good idea or for example, if you want to do your master's or your PhD in a certain lab under a certain supervisor, it's always good <clears throat> to get an internship or some job shadowing work in the lab so that you can see what is the lab environment like? Um, how do people work? What is expected of you on a daily basis so that you can get a feel already at the very, very early uh, start of what is going to expect it of you? Does this match your values? Will you be happy here, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of planning in looking and applying for a job and writing a CV. Now let's look at the CV, <clears throat> some general comments. Remember the CV is the most important document in your academic or your job application portfolio. This is a running record. So this is basically like your biography and advertisement of yourself, of your academic and your professional achievements, all your skills and the experiences that you have gained that make you a good fit for this job. You should use it very clearly to identify your qualifications and also emphasize your strengths by presenting your education and your skills, any achievements, any papers that you have successfully published or that you anticipate to submit for publication and also sometimes volunteer experience depending on the type of job that you are applying for. Now CVs are normally between two to six pages long but that can also depend on the career stage and sometimes adverts and, and, and funding applications or fellowship applications will stipulate how many pages the CV should be. So clearly read the advert or the fellowship uh, uh, call and read it very, very carefully. What are the specifications? If they request you to have a CV of only two pages, then please have only two pages for them available. Then it's a good idea also to ask your advisors um, and mentors if you can see a copy of their CVs to see what type of information do they include, what type of headings do they use, how do they structure the CV, etc. Then you can learn how to write a good CV. Sometimes you will see um, some senior scientists also post their CVs on the internet. You can also have a look at that <coughs> and you can actually learn a lot from looking at other more senior colleagues CV and how they structure it, what type of information they include, etc. Remember, this is a living document and you need to keep revising it as you go on because sometimes you may attend a conference or you may publish a paper and then after some years you forget about this and you forget to include this in the CV. So continually update your CV. This is very important. <coughs> Then you use the CV, of course, to apply for different types of jobs. If you want to apply for funding, if you want to apply for an industry job, if you want to do a postgraduate study, a postdoc perhaps, if you want to maybe attend a professional program um, for graduate school, for scholarships, maybe if you want to be a member of a society, if you want to apply for a fellowship, sometimes for grants. And remember each of these, <clears throat> Sorry, applications differ in the format of the CV. For example, if you're applying for a research grant, some grants uh, may stipulate how you should format the CV and what information they want in the CV, others not. Um, for academic positions, also the CV will be different from uh, uh, from that that you apply to for C, uh, industry. For the academic CV, for example, you will need to emphasize more on teaching. Very important, your publications and the grants that you have obtained. And in contrast, for the industry CV, they will have a look more at the skills. So what type of skills have you gained during the research career? And this can be many. This can be leadership skills. 
This can be skills in certain um, experimental techniques. This can be team building skills. This can be communication skills. So there, there is a more, a bigger emphasis on the skill set that you attained. Now let's look at some basic tips of how you should write and format and structure the CV. <coughs> Remember, there is not one right way to compose your CV. This will depend on your type of job application to which industry you are applying. Maybe you're applying towards a university. Maybe you're applying um, for a job at an industry. Then you have to structure the information in the CV differently. Understand that the purpose of every document in your application packet is to show how you are a passionate individual, why you are so um, fit for this job, why you are will be a valuable asset for this job. And this needs to come through because remember companies, universities, they receive hundreds of thousands of CVs and you need to do a very good job in making yours stand out. Right. Consider tailoring your CV for each job description. So look for the key words that they are using in the job description and make sure those are highlighted or those skills are highlighted in your CV. Now, writing the CV takes a lot of time. It takes some energy. But targeting your materials in the beginning should save you time in the end. Remember, you submit fewer applications, but then you can get a job in a shorter amount of time if your CV is well written and structured. Very importantly, ask someone to review your materials. Check it for spelling and grammar. Remember, any spelling mistakes will um, create a very bad impression of you. So go through your CV very carefully and check that there's no spelling mis mistakes or no errors, right? So have this double checked. You check yourself and you can also give it to someone else, like a senior colleague to go through this and ask them, is this good enough? Where can I adjust it? Does it fit with the job description, etc., etc. So now let's look at formatting. So this is also very important. Um, remember that the CV should be very pleasing to the eye. It should be easy to read. And remember, as we said before, um, these committees receiving and reviewing the CVs, um, they receive hundreds of thousands of them and they really want to see something that stands out. I remember I read one story about um, a young student, she applied for a job, I think in the pharmaceutical industry, and she formatted the CV in a very kind of artistic way that really highlighted the skills. She used different uh, uh, 3D types of uh, animations and type of content to really showcase her skills and her fit to this company. And this eventually got her the job because her CV stood out from the thousands of others, right? So another point for formatting is use a good font so that people can actually read it. Um, that is very important. <clears throat> Set your margins to approximately one inch and then you make good use of the white space so your achievements don't run together. Remember, you don't want a lot of writing in your CV. You want bulleted points. You want to bold or underline or capitalize specific information. And then you also want to group specific information together, like your um, degrees that you obtained, for example, and the papers that you published will be in a different section. Also be consistent with um, your text and the formatting and the font size. Don't use different colors or, or distracting information depending on what type of job you are applying for. You can put your name, for example, in the bold letters and one or two font sizes bigger than the rest of the CV so that people can see this is your CV, this is yours. Um, also include a header with your name and a page number. This is important because if the CV gets printed out and the pages are not numbered, 
um, the reader may get, be, get confused with the information presented to them. So have a look that your formatting is clear and consistent. You have your pages numbered. And again, as we emphasized before, have it read by someone else and spell check. So now we're still on formatting. Remember, don't use abbreviations or acronyms that individuals outside of your discipline or expertise may not understand. So spell out the words, OK? Um, remember that the reviewers or the committee looking at your CV will read from left to right, and you want to place the most important and relevant information like the title of the organization on the left, and then less important information like the date or so that you achieve the degree, etc. on the right. You don't want a lot of text in the CV. You want to um, have bullet points and you highlight, for example, if the job advertisement is specifying that certain skills are required for this job, you can highlight this in a bold or an underlined word. Do not print your CV on both sides of the paper. Be careful of this and you want to print it on a plain white and heavyweight paper using a laser printer or sometimes when it's required for you to submit the CV online, remember this is very important to submit it well in advance because sometimes just the hour before the deadline closes, the system may be overloaded and then the system may not work or the internet may not be working or there may be some problem with something and then you don't submit in time. So be careful of this, especially with online submission systems. So submit well in advance and check. Ask the company or the um, fellowship authority um, whether they have received your documentation, ask for this. And if you don't hear feedback, then it's always good to follow up. Right, so let's look now at the organization. You should organize your CV so that the most relevant and the most compelling information is near the beginning, okay? Less important information like your hobbies, for example, should be right at the end of the CV, but depending on the type of job you are applying for, um, it's not really important to include hobbies. For example, if you are applying for a fellowship or academic position, that's not really relevant to include information on hobbies. This all depends on the type of job that you are applying for. Then the organization of your CV should be largely based very importantly on the job description. So read this very, very carefully and ensure that the skills required or any um, attributes that is required for this job is clearly highlighted in your CV. For example, if you're applying to a school that emphasizes teaching over research, then you emphasize this in your CV. The teaching should be very much highlighted. You should include a teaching statement, which courses you have taught, how many students you have taught, at what level undergraduate, or postgraduate, what was the feedback from these courses, etc., etc. So highlight them what is needed for this job description in your CV and make sure double check, go through the job description, print it out, highlight the important points that need to be included in your CV and double check that it is included. Then if you have long lists, sometimes people um, include subcategories, mark this very clearly. For example, if you've presented at many conferences, then you can divide this list by national conferences versus international conferences, and you can even subdivide this by location, topic, and your professional affiliation, etc. Also remember to organize the entries within each section in reverse chronological order. Sometimes the application will also indicate whether they want this in reverse chronological order. OK, so have a read at the job advert or the fellowship um, application requirements. So have a careful read um, about what is required. Now let's look at the different categories of the CV. So now we're done with how to format the CV. 
and what is needed and some tips and tricks. Now we'll focus on the categories of your CV, right? Now certain categories of CVs may differ. For example, categories for, a, a, uh, for example, a CV for the industry will differ from the categories for the CV, for example, for an academic position or a fellowship or a scholarship. For example, the industry CV will focus more on your skills that you have attained that fit with the job description. OK, and remember, while the first two categories are fairly standard across disciplines and job descriptions, titles and the order of the rest of your categories will vary depending on your personal strengths combined with what is required for the job description. Remember, most important and the pertinent information should be at the beginning, whereas less important information should be at the end of the CV. So obviously, you will start with your contact information and you will include your name. This will be in a bigger font and bolded. You will include your home mailing address your phone number and an email address. Now remember to also include a private email address because sometimes one changes from one job to another and then the job email address may no longer be valid. And when you have a Gmail address, write something professional, not some weird Gmail address, very something nice and professional and include this in your CV, right? Um, if you reliably receive mail on campus, it's a good idea to list your campus address too, but be careful. This may change if you relocate to a different campus or a different university. So check that this information is still valid, especially your phone number. Right, if you have an answering machine, make sure that this has a professional greeting or your cell phone. Um, leave the, the professional, the greeting should be very professional. Right. If your current last name is different than the last name you used on publications, presentation, etc., you may include a statement to this effect in this section. You may say that your previous surname was so and so. So be very clear, careful of all these information. Keep them updated, especially phone numbers and email addresses if you change from institution one institution to another. Then the next category will be what education do you have and any honors or awards or prizes that you have received now this can either be one heading or you can subdivide that into two headings so you list your degrees that you have obtained or sometimes um, people will also include courses that they've attended or sometimes they also include courses attended in a completely different section depending on the type of job description. Right, so you list your degrees. You will write this typically in reverse chronological order. So for each entry, you will include the degree type the field of the study, the school, the location, and of course, very important, the graduation date, right? You can also decide based on the relevance if you want to include institutions you attended. For example, if you had a short research visit, you can also attend, uh, include it here, or else you can include it in a separate heading for example, research visits, and then you list the research institutions that you visited. What did you do there? For example, you visited to do perform some research or give a lecture and you give the dates, the institution and obviously the country. Include the, sometimes if you have a PhD degree, you will have to include the title of your um, thesis and a little bit of a description of what your thesis was all about. Um, you can also include, as I said already, one to two sentences describing the topic that you studied. For example, if you did a master's degree, you include the title of the dissertation and what the study entailed and maybe what was the outcomes of the study. Um, maybe you published something, but this can be also then included under your list of publications where you mention the publications that originated from your master's or your PhD study. 
Then sometimes for academic CV, you should include your study area or the research area that you are interested in pursuing. And you can, for example, um, give subcategories for this. If you are, if your main discipline is biology, then you state this and the subdiscipline maybe be, um, for example, zoology, then you elaborate on this on the broad, the main discipline and then the subdiscipline, then you can also include this in your CV in the, in, in the research area a category that you are interested in pursuing. Then, for example, if you are interested or you are applying for a teaching position, um, this category is very, very important that you elaborate on all your teaching experience. Um, you will list your job title, the course that you taught, the name of the university, the dates and the terms that you taught. You will be very clear. You will mention that you either taught undergraduate students, or grad students, you will include the number of the students that you lectured. Um, then you can describe what was your duty in the teaching. You, was, you were maybe the course convener, you were the lecturer, you compiled the lecturing material and you delivered it and you also served as examiner for the course. This all needs to be very clearly outlined in your teaching experience. And sometimes they will also request um, for example, feedback documents on the quality of the education or the scores that you have obtained for your teaching. Then if you are applying for an academic position or you are applying to become a researcher or for a fellowship, you will have a separate section on your research experience. Now, sometimes students with limited research or teaching experience might consider you can combine sometimes these two categories of teaching and research into one heading, just mentioning experience, right? So if you don't have experience in this, don't worry, you can just adapt in the heading um, according to what fits you best. But if there's a gap, then you should also realize that this is now time to develop, <coughs> sorry, the skills so that I can have this in my CV. Then sometimes students or, or, or senior researchers with extensive research experience, they might need to divide this ca category into several sub categories. For example, you will have your list of publications and they will, this will be in reverse chronological order according to the uh, publication date. Remember, when you are citing your publication, you will use the consistent reference style. What I mean by that is you will include all of the authors and then the um, title of the paper in bold, then the full and not abbreviated name of the journal. Remember the volume and the page number and keep this formatting of every single publication that you list the same. You can even highlight if you were the corresponding author of the paper, whether you were the first or the middle author, what was your role in writing this paper? You can also briefly highlight. And then also what was the impact factor of the journal or what was the impact score of your article? How many people read this? Um, sometimes journals will have a citation report for your article, then you can have a look at this. What was the relevance and the interest in this article? Then you can also mention this. If you have multiple publications, then you can also list them in different subheadings. For example, publications in journal articles, publications as book chapters, and then which articles did you review? Now, this can be under the separate heading for academic citizenship, where you list papers that you reviewed for journals, right? Then, very important, if there's a lot of authors, you can bold your name so that the reviewer or someone on the committee can clearly see this is um, the position of your name among the authors. You either the first author or the last author. Then you can also have a separate heading for your research interest where you discuss the projects that you've been in involved with, your role, um, what was the outcome of these, etc. And you have to be prepared to talk about this during the interview where they will ask you, oh, they will ask you maybe, OK, we saw this research experience. Can you tell us more about, about this? What does this project involve? What skills did you attain in this project, etc.? So be prepared to answer questions about this. 
Then some other categories will include grants that you receive. This can be any scholarships, any fellowships, any research grant, and you list them. You also indicate the name of the project, the name of the grant, sometimes the grant funding number, um, the name of the granting institution, the date that you received this, and sometimes um, some researchers will also include the amount in dollars or rand or euro that you receive. Then there will be a separate heading also for the positions, um, for example, or the jobs that you previously had or any positions that you pre previously had and you list these. Um, sometimes it's not necessary for very senior people, although some people do include this. Then you include the name of the research team that you join, the university, the dates, and the person who supervised this. This you can um, include if you want to. Some people don't include this. Um, there will also maybe be a separate heading for presentations if you attended conferences. Um, this can be either conference presentation as the heading or research experience as the heading, depending on the type of job that you are applying for. Um, you can list this on versus professional presentations, invited presentations, and then you need to specify where you presented this talk. Um, was it to a professional organization? Was it at a conference? Was it an international conference? Was it a national conference today? the topic of the talk, did you chair perhaps the session? What was your role in this talk? Was it invited? Was it contributed? Was it a poster pre presentation? Right, this is important. And also include the dates of the presentation. Now let's have a look now that we have a general overview of the CV. It's important now to understand that there is different types of CV. So depending on the type of job that you will apply for, the style and how you format the CV will also differ. You need you will need to decide if the appropriate document is an academic. If you're applying for an academic position or for a fellowship or a grant, then you need an academic curriculum beta or a CV or a hybrid CV or a resume that is more applicable um, for the industry. Sometimes these names are used interchangeably. If you're not sure, make sure you understand the differences between the two. Sometimes it will also be uh, mentioned in the job description that this is what is required of you and then you need to format it accordingly. Right. Sometimes these terms uh, CV and resume are sometimes used inter interchangeably if you are especially on the international level. Um, it may differ from country to country, right? Sometimes they will specifically ask for a CV, um, but upon further consideration of your own credentials and your knowledge of the position, you may find that a resume is more um, what they are needing. So choose the format of your CV based on your knowledge, what is the norm in your field, and also the type of job that you are going to apply for. Now let's look at the different types of CVs. So in general, you get the academic CV. <coughs> Sorry. And you get the hybrid CV and then the resume. So what is the function of the academic CV? So this is apply to applying for academic position. If you want to apply for funding, for a fellowship, for a scholarship, for graduation school, to uh, apply to a postdoc or to a more senior position or for a PhD degree. The function of the hybrid CV is more for industry. It can also be for an academic position depending on the job advert. And then the resume is just in general a traditional type of job that you want to apply for. Now the length of these different types of CVs will also differ. The academic CV can be flexible, it can be very long, it can either be short. This all depends on the job advert. Sometimes the job advert will specify that they only want a CV of two or six or ten pages. The hybrid CV can also be flexible. Here you only include what is relevant and it's normally a bit shorter than your CV. The resume is very short and you want to include there just what is necessary. Okay, 
If we look at the focus, sometimes this may also differ. What types of information you include, the academic CV will include all your academic, your research, and if you're applying for a teaching position, it will also have teaching content, what courses you taught, at what level, for how long, and for how many students, right? What you want to emphasize here, what is your scholarly position or potential? Did you publish a lot of papers? Could you get grants? How many students did you supervise, for example? Um, how many societies did you belong to? What is your subject knowledge and your research interest that you also need to highlight? What awards and honors and accomplishments did you receive? What was your commitment to um, service for, uh, for research out of academia? For example, did you um, did your projects link up with any community, community uh, type of research or community work? Then the focus of the hybrid CV will again be your academic, your research achievements, the knowledge and the skills that you obtain. Put these all in bullet points. What type of experience, uh, job related you have, your accomplishments, and sometimes people also include here volunteer all depending on the type of job advert and what they need you to include in the CV. The resume, the focus be will generally be your knowledge and skills, and this will all be in bullet points, your job related experiences, your accomplishments, and then again, your volunteer efforts. So remember, each of these different, their lengths, and but it's important to read the job advert. What is required of you? For all of this, remember that your uh, the formatting and the content should be very consistent. So use a readable font, and you also don't want to have cluttered information. So a lot of text that is difficult to read or sing or text, for example, in single space that makes the text very difficult to read. You want to break up sections with some white space or some bullet points. So keep this all in mind. Here's some more information about the curriculum vitae versus the resume. Remember the CV for academic positions, etc., or teaching positions, or for the fellowship. Well, maybe uh, will be more a list of your professional and your educational history. Length sometimes is not always important. It may be several pages. It may only be a couple of pages. This will all depend on the job advert, what is specified in there, how many pages is allowed, and please stick to this. So this is mostly for, again, for your academic and your research or your teaching positions. Here you want your publications, your awards, your talks at conferences, the grants that you received, on the students that you supervise, the courses that you taught. This type of information should be in the CV. Remember, content is much more important than style and how you package this content, the formatting of this. Um, references can sometimes be included for the resume. References are not included, but be careful. This may also be highlighted in the job description. They may ask you to include this on your CV. Or if you're applying online, there may be a separate section where you include the references that the specific uh, job should contact to get more information ab uh, about you. Now, when you include references on an online system, for example, using an email of a previous supervisor, check that the email is still valid and also ask the person's permission. Send them an email, ask them, that you really would like to apply for this position or this fellowship and can you include them as a referee would it be acceptable for them and then you need to warn them that please the deadline is this um can you please submit my uh my uh letter of support and do this well in advance remember senior people can be extremely busy they may forget about this so contact them and also remember sometimes if you are closer with the person for example your supervisor you can send them a message or phone them that the deadline is coming up and you haven't received the letter or the system has not um approve that this letter has been uploaded so please send them a reminder sometimes they get so many emails they may miss your email 
This is not done intentionally, but sometimes people just get extremely busy. Now let's get back to the resume. So list your relevant skills. Um, this can be one or two pages. Um, two plus pages is OK for people who have a PhD and a postdoc. <laughs> Sorry, I have a cold. Um, this is normally used for non-academic or some research positions, business focused. You don't want any a lot of personal information here. You want, just want to portray this is the skill set that I have that makes me a really good fit for this job. Content and style is very important, the way you portray the information. Um, and remember, this is adapted to fit each specific job. Sometimes references is not included, like we already mentioned. Now, let's look what are people that are advertising job actually looking for? They are looking for someone who can actually do the job. Do they have their relevant experience, skills? Do they have the capability to do this job well? Um, Sometimes in the interview, you also have to portray a lot of enthusiasm, eagerness and, and an initiative. You have to be excited about this job and explain very well, answer the questions well, explain why you are such a good fit for this job. Um, sometimes um, when you apply for a job and you're really stressed out and you really need this job, remember, there is a thousand other candidates also that is desperate for the job. So don't come across as desperate. You need to convey that you are really skilled and you're really passionate about this job. And that's why, for example, if you're applying for the industry, you need to know the background of the company. What are their goals, their vision, and how does yours fit in with theirs? Similar to the, to, to the um, position, if you're applying for a research position, get to know the supervisor or the research group head. What type of research are they doing? And how will your skills contribute to the group skills? How will you add something different, something new to the group? Don't just say, OK, I have my PhD and this and that, or I have my master's and I have this in skill. Really emphasize what you will bring to the group. OK, what type of skills you have soft skills? Also, you have leadership skills. You have good writing skills. You mentioned what other courses or online workshops you attended that will really make you an excellent fit for this. And um, the overall how you package yourself, also how you dress, how you speak. This also um, creates the image of you when you're going for the interview and when you're writing your CV. Now let's look at targeting your CV. So remember you need to write your CV for the specific job um, application. So you may have a standard CV, but then you look at the job description and then you have to adapt the CV according to what is required in this job. Um, that's why don't just go and submit your CV to all different jobs and then think, okay, they're going to impress with this. No, remember these jobs, they receive many, many applicants and yours really need to stand out. So if the interviewer or the committee member that's going to review this don't see the relevant skills or the information that they need, they're just going to chuck this out and go to the next one. So very important, determine what the hiring manager or the selection committee is looking for in their candidate. Right? Does your document clearly demonstrate that you are an excellent fit for this job? If you are applying for a job with a hybrid CV, then you start by analyzing the job posting to determine the specific skills and the experiences you need that is a good fit for this position. If you have a hybrid CV, this should clearly state each of these requirements and not include irrelevant information, right? So stick to what is required for the job and highlight this in the CV. Don't include non-relevant or too much information that is not pertaining to the job, for example, like your hobbies. Um, academic CVs normally, as we mentioned before, is a bit longer, so they can be a bit less targeted and more general, okay? But still, for example, if you're applying for a teaching position, the teaching section of your CV need to be well developed to highlight what you will bring to the table if you will teach. 
Um, now, one way to make, for example, the academic CV more targeted is, is to strategically order your sections to put emphasis on those that are most relevant and favorable for the job. For example, if the position is teaching, then you will put your teaching um, information first. For example, you will have your education and then immediately after this, you will have your teaching. If you're applying for a research position, you will have your a heading for your education and then immediately after that, you will have your research interest and your publications and your funding. And then teaching will be a bit later in the CV if it's also required for you to do teaching, but not the main focus of the job. Then um, again, how to target your CV prior to writing your CV, do your research. Know yourself. How do your knowledge and skills and attributes align with the opportunity before you? Do you need to attend other courses or something before the deadline date to add a bit more oomph to your CV? Um, remember, your CV must be completed with a specific goal in mind so you are able to clearly identify how you are a match for that specific position, right? Now, someone that's going to read this need to clearly see what is your education, what is your credentials, what is your professional experience relating to the position, your ability to set and achieve goals and produce positive and possible measurable outcomes. So, for example, if you are, um, for example, applying for an industry position, maybe um, highlight how did the skills or, for example, the projects that you were involved in add to the skill set that is a good fit for this job? Maybe there was a specific technique or maybe there was a specific leadership skill that you attained. Um, if you are applying for a research position, what was the outcome of your previous research projects? Was it a lot of international uh, funding? a lot of uh, international talks, a lot of international papers. So what was the outcome of this? So really highlight this. And then also your depth and breadth of knowledge and competency within your field. Um, this is more also maybe related to academic type of positions, whereas industry, they are mainly looking for skills, but this all depends on the type of job and what they want or what is stipulated in the job description. Be very strategic when selecting the sections to include in your CV. This will also link to the type of job you are applying. For example, when we mentioned when you're applying for a teaching position, there needs to be a lot more emphasis on teaching in your CV. OK, then your headings, you want to showcase your most relevant and impressive experiences first. You order your sections based on the importance with the most important information first. Remember also different disciplines might have different conventions. So have a look also at other people's CV. For example, ask your supervisor, how would he structure a CV if he's applying for, for example, a teaching position? Then you ask him for advice. Please don't take like, for example, an academic CV and just send it to the industry. They are not interested really so much depending on the job and the job description on publications and that kind of thing. Some may, some may not be. It all depends on the job advert. They are looking for your skills that will make you a good fit to contribute to their company. Right? Sometimes demonstrating statements are important and this is used in a hybrid CV and this shows the employer how you have demonstrated a specific skill. For example, how you led a team and what this leadership led to. For example, there were certain outcomes. Um, this hybrid type of CV were also demonstration uh, statements beneath each work experiment. Um, for example, your employment and your volunteer experience. And here you want to produce a quality statements over quantity. So clearly explain how this job or how this experience contributed to your skill set. Remember the most compelling hybrid CVs are those that show how you have demonstrated a specific skill. So don't just mention the skill, explain how you um, attain that skill and how you use that, okay? 
One of the best ways to clearly outline a skill in a demonstration statement is to be strategic in the choice of action verbs. And later we'll have a list of action verbs to use in the CV depending on the specific skill set. Now the action verb should clearly indicate the skill that you are trying to demonstrate. For example, the beginning with the word collaborated. OK, this action verb links to teamwork or maybe leadership skills. Now, remember, a common mistake when creating a hybrid CV is to focus on irrelevant skills. So we don't want that. Look at the job, Edward. Ensure that you have the skills highlighted in your CV pertaining to what they need for this job. Very important. Now, there's also this where you don't have much to put on your CV. This is not a train smash. Let me just close this. If you are new, if you're still a young student, if you're still undergraduate and you don't have much research experience, your academic CV might end up being a bit space. Um, if this is the case for you, then you can use a different CV format depending on uh, the type of job that you're applying for. So then you can use this hybrid CV and this will allow you to give more details about the value of seemingly unrelated experience through targeted demonstration statements that focus on your transferable skills. So then you will focus more on how you demonstrated or used your skill set. And then you may also want to include a section detailing, for example, project that you were involved in school projects. Uh, what was the aspect of the program projects that relate? Remember, you have to relate this information that linked to the job. How does this projects that you involved in link to the job advertisement um, requirements? For example, if you were an intern in the lab, then you can mention you earned a lot of research skills. Um, or for example, laboratory skills, or maybe you were intern in the lab or you did, uh, you were employed to order specific chemicals, then you can mention the skill that you gained um, uh, financial management experience because you were in charge of ordering lab consumables, etc, uh, etc. Et so highlight this and ask for advice from a more senior person. Formatting and setup tips. Remember the style and formatting you choose for the CV can either detract or add to the document. So take the time to create your template and this will allow your individual personality to shine through. And already, if you don't have much on the CV, you have a look at what the jobs are out there and what skills do I need? And then you start making a list. OK, I need to attain or attend more leadership courses or I need to learn a different language. Or if I want to go on, for example, do a postgraduate study in chemistry, I maybe should attend more webinars or courses in, for example, uh, inorganic or organic chemistry or maybe go to a conference that is based on uh, some research done in, for example, biochemistry or a field related that you are interested in. Go to this because then you can also list. So make a list of where you want to see yourself in five years and what you should obtain or acquire the skills or the experiments to get there in five years. For example, if you see yourself as a lecturer, if you're very passionate about teaching, then you need to attend courses that learn you how to teach well. For example, online learning courses. This is also important. Distance learning. There's now a conference in UNISA coming up soon. So attend these type of events so that you can learn and build that CV. Remember, this is investment in your future, so you need to do it well. You need to update it and you need to allow sufficient time to do so and edit several drafts. You need to share with your supervisor. You need to check for spelling. Every piece of information that is in your CV should be there for a reason. And remember, this creates a picture of yourself. Don't include irrelevant information that is not linked to the job advert. If a piece of information that does not add anything to your CV, leave it out. And remember, there's a lot of um, 
websites on the internet also that is available for career advice like this one called uh, Vitae. If you type in Google, it's V-I-T-A-E. It's a website and there's a lot of useful information about how to write CVs and career development. OK, so now some tips to remember. Sometimes the job description will ask you to include information in reverse chronological order. So the most recent education and experience will come first. Dates are important to include. Remember, if there's a page limit, stick to the number of pages required and have a logical layout for your CV. Order your highlights according to your strengths and suitability of the, of the job or the job application. Then left, justify your, space, uh, your CV, have enough spaces or white space so that it's easier to read, don't have too much information in the CV, rather use bulleted points, um, have wide margins, okay? And don't try and fit too much information on one page. Then you want to use a readable font that is large enough to, and easy to read, like Arial or Calibri is good font sizes, Times New Roman also. You want to emphasize the important information first. Remember your heading should stand out. You want to use capital letters, but be careful sometimes capital letters is a bit difficult to read if you have all capital letters. You want to use, for example, a larger font or a bold font. Then you want to be consistent with the use of your verb tenses, your capitalization and your uh, bolding. Remember also when you are listing your list of publications, you want to keep the formatting of that consistent. Remember to number your pages also. You can also use a letterhead, especially when you are writing your cover letter. And this can create a very attractive personal letter and also use it on other documents, right? And be careful of not having a too busy CV. Have those headings, have those white space in between so it makes for easier reading. Now, things to avoid. Um, don't include something like Appendix D. What is this? Um, for example, use a profile instead. Don't, don't use ambiguous terms that is not clear. For example, if you including a word or something like Appendix D, what is this? What information is included in this? Um, right? Um, never be careful of using words like I, you, they, me, he or she, my. Be very careful of using certain um, words. Right. Um, sometimes people will also start this TV with a general biography, like an overview of their career history and what they've achieved. Um, as we already said before, no acronyms. We don't want abbreviations that is undefined. If someone outside of your discipline will read this, they may not necessarily know this term. Um, be very careful. You don't want to include your ID number, any information on religion. Um, sometimes it is required that you include information on race and, and this type of thing, but otherwise, um, depending on what is required of you, avoid this type of personal information, age, any political affiliations, definitely not um, marital status, photographs of yourself, your sexual orientation, family status. Um, be careful of including too much personal information. If this is required of you, then you include it, but stray away from including too much personal information. Then your skills, you can also include a separate heading for your skills, and this can be many different skills depending on what is required of the job. You can have your transferable uh, skills, and this is just as important as technical. Um, transferable skills is something like whether you can organizational uh, organize projects and for example if you were for example leading a project then you can highlight in your skills section that you um, uh, learned or you attained organizational or team management or leadership skills via this project because this involved leading a team of so and so many people um, 
Also, if you have attended a lot of conferences, gave a lot of talks, you're applying for maybe an industry position, or maybe as a science journalist, then you can highlight these communication skills that you have obtained that will help you uh, be a good fit for, for example, as a science journalist. OK, let's look at the action verbs that we use. Um, sometimes people will have a look at this type of words like supported, counseled, you taught, you designed. You can include like, for example, when you did a research prize, you can include this was a novel project never before done. Um, what type of project was it in what field? You need to specify that. What type of techniques did you attain? Did you attain software development skills, uh, computer skills um, or laboratory skills? And what laboratory skills? Did you order chemicals? Uh, did you obtain financial management skills in, in, in uh, managing ordering of consumables? Um, for example, did you gain expertise in operating a microscope? Another word is also assignment. This is also an action word. Remember the who, what, where, when, why, how, what was achieved type of um, action words. Um, for example, um, undergraduate chemistry students providing written feedback and ideas for improving during bi-weekly office hours. For example, this you can include um, how you co or supervise students. What was your um, you can include this, for example, in, in the teaching or, or some statement that you highlight how you could co supervise students or what was your approach to mentoring students, depending on the requirements of the job. So have a look at these action um, words, OK, and be specific. Um, for example, if you were involved in a physics research program, what physics? What type of physics? Did you do accelerator physics? Did you do um, astrophysics? Be specific in how you describe. Then also there's action words that you can use. For example, if you list your analytical skills, you can use these words. You evaluated data. You manage data. Data management is also a type of uh, skill that you attain when you work uh, as a researcher. You gain valuable data management and statistical analysis skills, communication skills you gain when you write papers, when you attend conferences, and um, you can use these action words. You collaborated, you contacted, you corresponded, you directed. Uh, you negotiated a new project, something like this, creative skills. There's a lot of different action words, uh, words to use there. Your data, you administered, you analyzed the data, you appraised the data also, you applied certain techniques. Education skills can be you advised the student, you adapted a new course for a uh, undergraduate students example. So all of these here is the list of. Um, so for example, if you are mentioning that you what leadership skills you attain, then you can mention <coughs> apologies that you directed a research team and this team focused on developing this and this project and this and this was the outcome of this work. Um, or you recommended a student for a position, something like this, organization skills, research skills can be you critique the paper, you analyze data, you solve this and this uh, research problem. So these are the, the type of action words that you use in the sentences where you describe the skills that you obtain. Now let's look here. Let's look at this example for, um, this is a CV example um, for pediatric residency. For example, the position on the CV um, can be different types of topics. And um, for example, if you, if the uh, job application was related to, for example, a program coordinator, then, um, you can have a type of duty statement. For example, you developed a cookbook. Um, they will specify a certain competency that you need um, for this type of 
program coordinator work, they will specify that you need teamwork experience, multicultural experience, and then you need to highlight this in your CV. And then the type of targeted demonstration statement that you then include in the CV to link it with what is required. You can say you collaborated with inner city youth to develop a cookbook which showcased diverse cultures in a meaningful way. So always link it back to what is required in the job description. OK, this is what is required and then how you can develop your targeted demonstration statement of how you develop the skill or this um, type of uh, uh, skill that you need to fit well in with the job. Here's another one. Here, for example, if they advertised a position for a research assistant, um, this is the type of requirement they want, the PCR, you need to have experience in gel electrophoresis and DNA extraction. Um, this type of uh, skills they will mention in the job advert that you need to have conducted research on maize, on corn or wheat. And then this is the type of statement that you will include in your CV then that to apply for this uh, position um, in your research background, you will mention that you, for example, were leading a project or you were involved in a project as a co-investigator or as a team member or as a master student and you research the effect of a variety of chemotypes on wheat genes demonstrating the impact of a specific chemotype in Fusarium head blight disease. So then you, you add a different dimension because you are specific. They're looking for a research assistant in, for example, food science. But now if you have done work, for example, on the pathogens linked to wheat, this can add a new dimension because then you will bring knowledge of pathology into the maze type of research. OK. Here, for example, um, if they're advertising a position um, or teaching assistant um, and they require um, this is a not targeted duty statement prepared equipment for laboratory sections and this is the skills that they require knowledge of health and safety requirements um, and this is how you will target in your demonstration statement you adhere to the health and safety guidelines ensuring all equipment and materials meet the standard now remember when you are for example, um, assisting like uh, being a course or a lab demonstrator, for example, in an undergraduate course where they have uh, experimental practicals, there's different types of skills that one needs to link with that. You need to prepare chemicals, for example, for the students or um, you need to order consumables for them. And for example, when you prepare these chemicals, then you can go a step further by indicating that you adhere to health and safety guidelines. This will give the, uh, the reviewer details that you are knowledgeable about the health and safety aspect about working with chemicals and that you also ensure that all of the equipment um, was adhering to the standard, right? So instead of just saying in your CV that you prepared equipment or laboratory sections or whatever, you have to be more clear about it. So always be very clear in your statements. Just don't write something that is very fuzzy, that is not very um, specific. For example, again, if they're looking for um, example a research assistant in for example uh, physics um, let's take this example and they are looking for you need a background for example if you are iron beam accelerator expert they are looking for someone like this to assist with this um, you, you, you should not only mention the type of techniques that you were exposed to or the type of equipment that you worked with. You need to really align um, this with how this, your previous work really added a specific skill and a specific something that makes you very unique um, for application in this position. So highlight the uniqueness of your work. Don't just 
write broadly, always be very specific in how you explain the information and elaborate very clearly. Think about what the skills in general is required and then you emphasize your uniqueness in this. For example, if you are applying for a position as accelerator physicist, then you can mention that you attained, for example, um, knowledge in synchrotron research because you visited the synchrotron and you used a specific synchrotron technique for a specific project to understand, for example, elemental distribution in a specific material and that will link, that will tell the reviewer, oh, besides physics knowledge, you also have materials knowledge because you characterize material, you have a bit of background in material science as well, and that gives you the added advantage of applying for the job. Um, so this is very important, having clear writing and very, very clear headings and elaborating on on, on what skills you have, how you attain, attain that, and what was the outcomes of certain projects and um, things you were involved in. So now, let's look at the application process. So once you have now your CV done, you have it nicely formatted, you checked that it aligns well with the job description, and you checked it for spelling and grammar. This is very important. You proofread it again. You ask someone else to read it as well. Um, if you have like access to a career office, you can also take the CV to the career office and ask for professional help or for a mock interview. Um, so ask for help, okay? There's a lot of career services out there that will help you in supporting and writing a very good CV. Remember to follow the submission instructions. What other documents are required? For example, if you're, you need certified copies of your degree certificates, ensure that the, the certified copy is a recent copy and not something that has been certified many years back. Make sure all the documents um, is in one file. For example, should it be in PDF format? Should it be compiled as one document or should it be separate documents? What should the file name be? Don't use um, ambiguous and ununderstandable file names. Be clear with your file names. Also, for example, they will um, indicate in the job application or the fellowship application how you need to address them in the email. For example, the subject heading should include something like uh, re environmental geologist competition, so and so, and your name. Sorry, so clearly follow this and have a look at this, right? Your cover letter is also very important. This needs, you cannot just submit only the CV, you need to provide a cover letter with the date of your application, your contact details, and the position. Um, make sure that you clearly outline the position and the position number that you are implying for, and then you elaborate why you are such a good fit for this position, because you are highly motivated, a self-directed individual, and you have over so-and-so years experience that makes you a good fit for this job. And again, align your cover letter to the job description. Outline that you have a proven track record of working effectively in a team. If there's leadership skills required, you mention how you were, how you attained these leadership skills. You led a, a project or a team of so and so many researchers. Um, outline that if there is required communication skills, then you can say you're an exceptional communicator, fluent in multiple languages, able to multitask, etc., etc. So write a good cover letter. Again, for example, look again at your at the um, requirements of the job. For example, here is an example of what is required. They are looking for a lecture in psycholinguistics. And you check then again, do you have a PhD in the relevant field, right? Check this, that you included this in the CV. What is your experience? Did you publish in this type of field? Did you teach in this type of field? What type of external funding is linked with this type of field? What is the research interest? That is it linked? Is your work linked with this that they specify? Were you involved in other administrative work as well? What was your skills and your abilities? Is this essential? 
check that you included this, that you produced high quality research and published at the highest levels in this field. If you don't, then you're going to have a problem. So this they say is essential, so make sure that it's included in your CV, etc. Okay, now, now we're done with the academic CV. So let's now go to the industry CV. All right. Now, remember for industry, sometimes um, recruiters will have a look at your social media profile. So make sure this is um, updated and it's professional and ensure that you don't write or um, sometimes people post a lot of negative stuff and a lot of inflammatory stuff on social media. Avoid this at all costs because the employers will go and look at the social media profile and if they see something that they don't like, your application is out. So be very, very careful what you write on social media. Um, this can really negatively affect your career if you write something on social media that is not good. So avoid this type of um, make sure your social media, your LinkedIn profiles are updated. It's really professional and have a look at that. OK, and remember at industry people will go and look at this. So make sure it's professional and that there's not any inflammatory or negative comments written on there. OK. Then for the industry CV, things to consider is what type of company structure would you be comfortable? This you need to think about already. What type of industry do I want to work for? What is the work atmosphere? Are you compatible with that work environment? How does your life values align with that of the company? So have a look at the company's website. What is their vision? What is their goals? What is the work environment like? Talk to people that have previously or are currently working there and find out what is the environment like? What type of industry again do you want to work for? What role do you want to play in this industry? What is the size of this organization? Is it a bigger, more established organization? Um, do you want to have a leadership role in this uh, organization? And if you want, you need to work towards that. You need to build on your leadership skills. Um, do you want to work nationally, internationally in the USA? What is your strongest selling points? What is your skills? What is your achievements? What is your professional qualities? These are all things that one needs to think about. What is your asset? Besides your other skills, what is your personal assets? Do you have an ability to work in a collaborative environment, in a multidisciplinary environment, in a multicultural environment? Um, what is your ability to lead a project? Certain verbal and communication skills is also very important in some types of companies. So have a look at this. If you don't have this, then you have to attain, go to workshops, go to events and learn these skills or attain these skills. Now, sometimes these employers will also rate your skills. They will rate you according to where, whether you can communicate verbally well, whether you can work in a team. Can you solve problems? This is a big point in if you're applying for industry, can you make decisions? Can you solve problems? And this you can also link to back in your CV by uh, explaining you had this problem, research problem, and this is how you um, overcame this, or you can mention that you had a difficulty in your PhD work and how you're able to overcome this, overcome this project, ach, this problem. Um, what is your ability to plan and organize and prioritize work to process information to analyze data? Um, any other technical knowledge like computer skills, um, computer software programs, ability to create written reports and remember these skills all depend on the type of job you are applying for. Then you need to, when you have this background information about what is required of you, you need to also further ask yourself who's going to read this. Are these people scientists? Are they HR staff? Who's going to read my CV and who's going to get a first view of my CV? And um, how technically savvy are they? Are they familiar with this information? That's why we said avoid acronyms, because if people are not from your discipline, they will not understand your acronym. Really emphasize what is interesting about you. 
it needs to stand out and your headings and your subsections needs to be um, strategically aligned to the position. Right, again, for the industry CV, it's a marketing tool. You want to advertise yourself with the CV, right? So remember how you structure it. It's very important and you need to align it with your job. The content is important, what you have in it. Don't have irrelevant content in it. Always link the content with the actual job. The format and the style is very important. Um, Always tailor the content of your CV to both your audience and the job description. So who will see this first? Will it be a hiring manager? Will it be a human resources? Will it be a person with similar expertise than you? Then you need to align the content um, for them. Remember, exclude data such as salary, expectation, religious or political affiliation, geographical restrictions, age, relationship status. That information, personal information should generally, such personal information should generally stay out of the CV. Then you only want to include data that is relevant for the position. So if they require a certain skill set, then you need to move that more to the first pages of the CV. So highlight the skill set that is required in the first couple of pages of your CV. And um, then content, let's look at what you need to write. So what you need to understand is have a look at what is required of you. Have a very careful look at the job description. Highlight the keywords. What is required of me? What skills? What knowledge should I have? Should I have a certain degree? Highlight this and make sure that you highlight this back in your CV. OK, this is very important. Um, Review the company that you're going to apply for. You need to understand the company because they will ask you details or information about the company. And if you don't know this, this can have a negative effect on your uh, interview. So know the company, know their values and already think that this is their values, this is their mission statement, this is their vision. How does your expertise, your skills, your life goals fit into all of this? And highlight this also during the interview if they ask you this, or you can just mention this. Obviously, um, the headings will be the same as for the other types of CVs. You'll have your contact information, your email, your phone, your qualifications, your education, your experience or work experience. Um, the skills will be computed and you need to list. You need to be, don't just mention computer skills. You need to list what type of computer skills, what type of programs. If they emphasize that you need certain um, skills in handling certain software, then you need to align this with the job description. For example, it's if it's not exactly um, the same, then you can highlight how does this a skill in this software program that you attained aligned with a program uh, or a computer skill that they require in this job. Um, analytical skills, you need to highlight this, be very specific. Language also, you need to specify, just don't write English. Are you fluent in this? Is this your native language, etc.? So be very specific. Technical skills also outline what was your technical skills, what type of instruments did you work with, what is your proficiency in this. Um, also the uh, software programs like the Word, Excel, how proficient are you in this? Do you have any other programs that you are skilled in? Um, remember this, the way you express yourself in written form will be evaluated by the readers and unveil your thought processes. Now consider using this following format when describing your skills, the project action and the results. For example, you're involved in a project, you were a team member that applied so and so techniques and the result was this or the outcome was a publication and a presentation, right? And then you want to transfer to the resume as a complete statement. You want to be clear. Right, you collaborated on a project of lipid membrane cubic phase investigation and you apply this in these techniques to distinguish lipids of different phases and also be clear of what type of lipids and um, what was the outcome of this project. So always be very clear in your writing. For example, this is another one. 
where they want a project, um, they want uh, someone with expertise in in vitro 3D human small intestine modeling. Um, what was your role in this? Were you a project manager or just a student working on this? And what did you do? So now you write in the CV, you manage the project team that developed fabrication technique of the mold with precise shape and density of human small intestinal villi and invented the first in vitro 3D human intestine model. So you can, here you can elaborate, what did you bring to this project that may make you very unique for this specific job, right? What was the value added, remember? Quantify experiences to convey size and or scale of project budget and results. And this always makes a stronger impression. OK. <laughs> then, yeah, let's look at some more examples. If you write something like this, responsible for the development of enterprise wide quality engineering services, this is a bit vague. It's rather better to rewrite it like this. You created strategic quality engineering services for enterprise-wide solutions resulting in greater effectiveness. OK, so this is a bit more clear, but more elaborated and using the action word created. OK, yeah, again, worked on the fusion coefficients and Brownian dynamics of DNA origami structures. This is a bit vague. Um, what is worked on? Were you a team member? Did you lead this? This is vague. OK, rather you lead the project team to create a model to calculate the diffusion, blah, 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 in collaboration with researchers from MIT and Harvard. So this adds another dimension. You now said that you led the project, you collaborated with researchers from these very standing in the institutions, and maybe you can even add this was published in so-and-so, or this was communicated in so-and-so, depending on the type of job that you're applying for. Again here, Responsible for merger and acquisition due diligence, which included financial and sensitivity analysis. Again, a bit vague, not enough. People can see, no, you just wrote something. Rather, you were the member of the M&A, defined this, that performed comprehensive due diligence and financial analysis. And what did this financial an analysis entail, including management, evaluation, historical results, sensitive and relevant financial uh, evaluation? Again, you are responsible for improving reliability of optical networks. What was your responsibility? You developed and optimized. This is clearer. Uh, up a light path diversity scheme that achieved instantaneous response to multiple network failures for ultra reliable optical net leading to a more reliable product. So this year you really emphasize that this is what you developed and this led to a more reliable product that was distributed or patented or whatever. So clearly elaborate. Right then on the format, reverse chronological order is important. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about that because we're almost running out of time. Remember to highlight important points or headings with bold and italics. Um, keep to the page length. You want to avoid any jargon. Less is more. Don't have too much information on the CV, just the most pertinent, summarized nicely with bullet points. Sometimes they prefer not to have the reference listed or exaggerated or a photo of yourself, etc. So let's look at this briefly. What do recruiters say about the hiring process? So let's look at this one. She's the patient care director of LifeBridge Health. And she said, what does she look for in a resume? So after I look for the skill set, I look for how they might have assisted with some change, how they impacted their organization, if they made a difference, okay? This next one, what if the applicant hasn't interviewed in many years, practice in front of the mirror or do a role play, right? So practice for the interview, this is also important. Then another one here, she's the director of HR, um, she says here, yeah, any resume tips? I don't want to have to search to try and find out if the candidate has the skills. Their content should be for a particular position. So remember, link your content with a position, highlight it in separate headings and make sure that it's clear. People don't want to look for information. 
What should applicants know in advance? The candidate needs to have the right attitude. Remember, attitude is a small word that can make a very, very big difference. You want to have the right attitude. You want to be interested in job. You want to sound positive and excited that this is really a good fit for you and you want to make a difference here. Right, so during your interview, be enthusiastic, speak clearly, be professionally dressed and be really excited about this position. You need to show passion. Right. Um, here's another one. What do they look for first? I usually go right for the cover letter. Remember, this is important. The cover letter where you introduce your interest in the position, why you are such a good fit, why you have this, how you attain the different skills, etc. Your contact information. Because resumes are all very similar, I look for a candidate to engage me and to really get a glimpse of who that person is. What do they know about us as an organization? Can they clearly define how their values and their skill set match up to what we offer as an organization? Here's another one. Clarity. Remember, the structuring and the focusing of the CV and cover letter is important. Be clear and articulate what you're looking for. OK, if you come across as confused, then we are confused. Then she says here something about any resume advice. Keep it simple and clean when a resume is overcrowded and there's no white space. You can't jump into it, so they want to jump into it. They need to see a clear information about your skills you as a person and how you can contribute in a very unique way to this job. So thank you very much for listening. I wish you all the best.